Well, today I'm going to start building an altar, and I'm going to build the altar for All Saints Episcopal Church in Bayhead, New Jersey. Now, the church sustained a lot of damage during Hurricane Sandy, and during the renovation, the builder, John Tim, came up with the idea of using the reclaimed structural lumber, like the floor joists and, and anything that was being removed, to build an altar for the Bristol Hall section of the church. So the first step in this project was to take the old boards that look just like this and turn them into these nice dimensional pieces of lumber that I can now build with. And I did make a short video on that process and I'll be sure to put a link on the screen if you want to see it. The first thing that I did to prepare for this project was to make a scale model. And this helped to see the proportions of the altar and once the model was made I was able to make a cut list or in this case it's really more like a parts list and the first part that I'm going to make is the top. I'm going to use three boards to make the top uh, but while I was milling the boards there were two sections where the knots had fallen out of the boards and so I needed to repair them and I repaired the boards with what's known as a Dutchman. I'll bring the camera closer and explain. Often when you think of a Dutchman joint, you think of the classic butterfly or bow tie design. But it's really just another term for a wood patch. And so in this case there had been a knot here that had fallen out while I was milling the board. And so I've cut a notch in the board. I've glued this wood block in its place. And now I'll rip the block flush with the edge of the board using the table saw. I've lined the boards up in the order that I want to join them and I've numbered them one, two, and three. And now I'm going to put an indication mark on the boards and at each one of these indication marks that's where I'll line up the biscuit joiner. And I generally put a biscuit about every 10 inches. I'll use the old cutoffs from the floor joist and that will help protect the edges of the board while I glue the top up. I finished clamping up the top and all the seams came together really nice and tight and what I'm doing now is using a wet rag to remove any of the glue that squeezes out of the seams before it has a chance to set up. After I finished gluing up the top I then glued up the bottom and the bottom was a lot easier to glue up because it was only two boards and also it's much smaller. Now that the top and the bottom are glued up, I've moved on to the legs and I just finished cutting them to length and the next step is to cut all of the mortises. Before I start cutting the mortises, I wanted to point out another repair that I needed to do to two of the legs. It's very similar to a Dutchman joint but in this case I cut grooves in the legs using a dado blade in the table saw and then filled the grooves with scrap wood and then cut the scrap wood flush again using the table saw. I've marked out all of the legs and now I'm going to use the mortising machine to cut all of the mortises. 
I finished cutting one half of the mortise and to cut the other half I need to remove the leg from the fence and turn it around and now I'm ready to cut the second half of the mortise. If you're wondering if you could avoid this extra step by using a larger bit, uh, you could, but I find that any bits that are larger than 3 8 are just too much for this mortising machine to handle. With all the mortises cut, I'm ready to move on to the tenons. And the first step is to cut the boards to length. And since I want a distance of 16 inches between the legs, I need to add an inch and a quarter for the tenon on each side of the board, giving me an overall measurement of 18 and a half inches. I finished cutting all the boards to length and I've put a dado blade in the table saw to cut the tenons. I'll need to raise the blade a little to cut the shoulders. Well now that I've cut the mortise and tenons and it's a nice snug fit, I'm ready to move on to cutting notches in the cross section. Let's bring the camera close and look at the model and I'll show you what I'm talking about. When I remove the top, you can see that there is a beam going across the length of the altar and it's notched into the cross sections. So now I need to cut the notches into the cross sections and once I finish that, I'll cut notches into the beams. I'm using a cross cut sled in the table saw to cut the notch out. And I have to use my regular saw blade, which is only an eighth inch kerf, simply because the dado blade that I have isn't tall enough. I put a notch in all of the cross pieces, and the next step is to cut the beams to length. The top beam on the scale model measures eight and three quarters of an inch. And since I built the scale model at an eighth inch scale, meaning an eighth of an inch equals an inch, I'll multiply eight times eight, which gives me 64. And from 64, I'll count the eighth of an inches. So 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. So now I know that I need to cross cut the top beam at 70 inches long. I'm using the same crosscut sled to cut the notch in the beam and I've clamped a smooth piece of plywood to the edge of the table to support the beam while I cut the notch. Now the top can't simply rest on the beams. I'm going to need to notch in supports and then the top will rest on those supports and I'm going to make the supports out of white oak. And again I'm back at the crosscut sled to cut the notches. Well I've come in this morning and I've unclamped the top and I unclamped the bottom and now I'm starting to work on the oak cross pieces that will hold the bottom shelf of the altar and also support the top of the altar. I decided that I wanted the shelf at the bottom of the altar to float over the beam about an inch, so I cut a shallow notch in the shelf support. <laughs> 
The oak supports that will hold the top of the altar, I want to be flush with the top of the beam. So I'll bring the camera in and show you how I locate the depth of the notch. I'm holding the white oak top support flush with the top of the beam and I've marked a line at the bottom of the notch in the beam and the distance between the line and the bottom of the support is the depth needed for the notch. Well as you can see I'm still a little bit heavy but rather than trying to cut the notch just a little bit deeper I'll simply rip this off on the table saw. Okay, well now that looks nice and flush, but I'm starting to think that the cross piece looks a little heavy. So I think I'm going to taper maybe from one inch down to zero where the cross piece connects with the beam. And the way I'm going to do that is I'll measure down from the top of the support one inch on each side of the support and I'm going to do this with both supports and then I'll measure over a half an inch from the notch and use a straight edge to draw a line. And I'll use the bandsaw to cut the taper. I figured while I was at it, I would put a slight taper on the bottom shelf supports also. And the next step is to remove the rough blade marks left from the bandsaw. And I'll do that with a pass or two over the joiner. last part and now I'm going to bring everything upstairs where I have a little more room to dry fit the altar together. Well now I'm in the upstairs of the barn, this is my art studio and I'm ready to assemble the altar and this is what's known as a dry fit. And I'll hold this together with a squeeze clamp with just a little bit of pressure. Now I'm ready to attach the beam, the top beam. And next I'll add the oak supports, the cross piece for the top. And I used oak because Douglas fir is really pretty soft and I wanted a very strong wood to support the top. And finally, the top of the altar. Well, the next step is to disassemble the altar, give it a good sanding, then glue it back up and get it ready for finish. And as soon as I have a video on that, I'll make sure I put a link on the screen. But it may take a few weeks because I'm going to wait until I deliver the altar. Uh, maybe that way I can get a picture of the church or maybe even a picture of the altar in the church. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Thank you.